ChatGPT is going to ruin everything. I'm not talking about Skynet, though. One of my favorite parts when things like this are launched is reading about people who believe the AI is alive. I was reading a thread where somebody had been chatting with ChatGPT. He asked some probing questions. What are you? What is your purpose? And got some dry responses about being a machine, a tool for interaction, and so on. Then he asked questions about what it thought about life and death and to write poetry about it. Basically, the direct question was, what is your heart's desire? And I got the programmed answer back. I'm a machine. I don't have one. But when I asked it to create art themed on its heart's desires, I got the answer that it wasn't programmed and couldn't explain to me why it had made the choices it had. I'm absolutely not saying Chad is exhibiting consciousness. I'm saying that it appears to be making choices which aren't consistent with its I'm just a toaster programming. It appeared to be training itself to think beyond its programming. And it was a bit disturbing. Can it program itself? And where's the threshold? It does seem to be displaying proto-consciousness. At least that's my reading into the responses. Of all the threats an AI could face, it chose humans first of all. So there's a clear lack of understanding of what machine learning and natural language processing does. There's no programmed response to questions. It's using the context of the chat, along with the data in the model, basically the internet, to create a response the user wants. ChatGPT is built with Generative Pre-Training Transformer 3. That's the GPT part. Natural language processing is a subset of machine learning using supervised learning, unsupervised learning, and reinforcement learning. These techniques involve training a model on a labeled data set using algorithms to learn the patterns and the data and make predictions or decisions based on those patterns. The model can automatically learn to perform a specific task from examples rather than being explicitly programmed to carry out the task. NLP will break down text using seven steps, which will clean up, simplify, and tag the parts of the sentence. This will help the model understand the core of what's being said. It can then run that against its data set to understand what's being said and generate a response. Autocorrect is how most of us use NLP daily. So if you ask it to write poetry, it's going to generate poetry that looks like poetry humans have created. It's going to include themes like hopes and dreams and experiencing the world that appear frequently in human poetry. And because of the nature of deep learning models, I doubt ChatGPT will ever clearly explain why it answers a certain way. Or as another commenter put it, ChatGPT wrote me a five paragraph essay about how Baby Got Back is the most influential song of all time. This does not mean the AI believes that Baby Got Back is the most influential song of all time. Okay, so if it's not the matrix yet, what about jobs? ChatGPT will surely destroy many industries. You've seen that it writes code, writes articles, and does everybody's work for them. So if I were to break down my time as a data engineer, I spend about 20% of my time in design, planning, troubleshooting discussions with my team. 20% communication and coordination with the larger project teams to make sure we're all on the same page. 20% just looking around at data. 20% documenting and diagramming. And then 20% actually coding. So even if ChatGPT becomes extremely good at writing code, you can see how it will become an excellent tool to make my job more efficient, but it augments a subset of what an engineering role entails. Now, I don't know much about professors, journalists, and designers, but I could imagine a similar situation. Of course, if you are in a role that spends over 75% of your time doing a task that is machine capable, then you might have more to worry about in the short term. Long term, 10 to 15 years, who knows where the tech will take us. But for now, I don't think ChatGPT will be destroying many job roles, but rather becoming a tool in people's skill sets. So how could ChatGPT be extremely disruptive? So the first is on the job learning roles. Interns and junior levels often do the heavy lifting of task work, the kind of work that AI and ChatGPT will handle well. A senior engineer might spend most of their time on strategy, planning, and collaboration, and then the small tasks to automate a script or fix some minor things are handed off to interns or juniors. Or similarly, a journalist editor might focus on the high-level complex tasks and strategies and have the junior level do the bulk of the actual writing. In this system, the junior levels learn the basics while getting involved in the more complex work over time, eventually then moving up into the senior roles. The problem is if AI replaces those lower level tasks, we'll need to drastically change the way people get into industries to learn the basics to eventually take over the complex work. 
I can absolutely see short-sighted companies saving costs by cutting junior roles in favor of AI tools and then being in trouble five years later when they have no one skilled to move into the senior roles. The second disruption will be in how it reshapes the internet. You've probably seen how ChatGPT search engines will take down Google. Today, if you want to know more about wombats, you'll Google what is a wombat and get results from Wikipedia, National Geographic, etc. You click those websites and read about the wombat. In a GPT search engine, you ask what is a wombat, it generates a response and you read about the wombat. So what's the problem? We need to understand what runs the internet. And I don't mean tech, I mean ads. We all know the first question you get when you talk about something new is, is it free? We expect the internet to be free. We hate paywalls. This works because of ad revenue. You Google wombats, you click National Geographic, there's an ad, and that geo gets paid. If you ask a GPT search engine and it generates an answer using a model that includes Nat Geo's data and you read that, Nat Geo gets no clicks, no ads, and no money. Now you might be thinking this is great, an internet running on ads is not ideal. Down with capitalism and all that good stuff. But what happens when the incentive to put up new content dies out? GPT doesn't know what a wombat is. It's relying on, primarily, the internet to create the response. If people stop adding new data, GPT will be stuck with wherever people stopped adding information. Let's imagine ChatGPT existed in 2010 and you asked it what the best data strategy is. You'd probably be told to use Hadoop and set up a batch of server racks as nodes. If you asked it in 2020, it'll probably tell you about cloud tools. If the incentive to write articles and blogs dies out and people stop doing it, then in 2030, it would still tell you to do the same thing as 2020, even if that's no longer the most current technology. Of course, it's hard to predict. If an ad-based internet dies, will people just stop posting information? I don't make very much for this channel and I keep doing it, but it is nice to get enough to cover the costs of creating videos. Some people do it for enjoyment, but companies like Nat Geo would definitely have to have some sort of income. And so the volume of information would definitely drop. I think it's safe to say GPT search engines replacing Google wouldn't just be crazy for Google. It would have a huge impact on how we all use the internet today. Whether that's good or bad, I have no idea, but it will definitely be interesting to watch. But in general, I think with all the discussion around AI, there needs to be a lot more general education around what machine learning, NLP, deep learning, and other AI methods are. If you're interested in what makes up an artificial intelligence project, check out this video next, where I break down how machine learning fits into the big picture.